Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed update on the tropics for September 26, 2023. In today's update, we're going to break down all the details that you need to know about with Invest 91L as it moves off towards the west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Significant development with this system is looking more possible, and this could make a very close call with the northern Leeward Islands in the next five to seven days. We'll break all those details in this video. Looking at the latest true color visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to his website where you can view these satellite images 100% for free. Go check it out after this video. So we can see here is 91L located right now roughly 40 degrees west in longitude by 10 degrees north in latitude. Definitely further south than most of our systems that have formed um, earlier this month and therefore we could see this get much further west. Taking a closer zoomed in view on this system on 91L and if we look very closely, we could see that there appears to be a little bit of a swirl. So we have winds that are doing this around the system. They are kind of coming around like this. Not a very well-defined center yet, but we're trying to get something forming. And if my best guess would be where the center is actually located, it would probably be somewhere right in here. Right in there is where I think the low-level center might be trying to consolidate where the deepest convection is. And that means there is not a lot of wind shear to deal with versus with what we have here with Philippe. We have a lot of westerly shear that is encroaching. Also long to go with that, some dry air. You can see these feathery white sears, the outflow from Philippe, really not impacting 91L all that much. Now, looking at the latest NHC forecast here, let's take a look at that because we can see that there is now a 90% chance for tropical formation on 91L. And I want to read this all to you because that's my job at providing official, honest information in these videos, especially when we look at the NHC. So... This is uh, disturbance number one. Showers and thunderstorms continue to show signs of organization in association with a broad area of low pressure located several hundred miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Environmental conditions are expected to be conducive for development and a tropical depression is expected to form in the next day or two while the system moves generally west-northwestward across the central Atlantic or so. So about maybe 10 to 15 miles an hour is what we're thinking generally. But now, while uh, it is showing that this could miss the islands, I want to take note of something. If we actually go to their archives, which I rarely do in my uh, updates here, but I just wanted to show you all with where this is headed and why I think this is going to go much further west than what most uh, within what the NHC shows. So if we go back here, I got to zoom out because this is going to keep on wanting to zoom up further uh, to the north. So if we go back a few, you can see how this is narrowing, right? But take note where our disturbance is. It's kind of going, it, it's kind of zigzagging, right? It goes here, then it goes here, then it goes here, then it goes here, and then it's like right here. So the long-term motion actually is probably due west-northwest at or about 285, 290 degrees, which could get this extremely close to the islands if this trend continues. So that's why we're going to start doing updates on this system um, because of how uh, this is all evolving. And if we just go back uh, a little bit, do again, I want to make sure um, I'm covering this very well. If we go here, you can just see literally a couple of updates later where it is here. Then we go right here. It's really the average heading, I would say, is due in this direction, which again, it could come very close to the islands in days to come. So let keep that in mind. And right now, this has a 90% chance of tropical formation. So looking at the latest Euro model, uh, the GFS is an outlier. So we are not going to show the GFS in today's video because it's just doing some crazy crap with it. Actually, you know what? We will because 
If not, then people are going to be like, oh, you're cherry picking off of one model. So we will include the GFS model and the Canadian model in today's update. But first, we're going to look at the Euro. And this is for this afternoon. We can see, of course, this is um, this is Philippe over here. Notice how sheared it is. While our system down here is not sheared, there's a lot of green, a lot of deep convection associated with the system. So going forward, uh, let's bring this a little bit. Let's go out to about 48 hours. Oops, not there. So out to day two, we can see where our system is. Now it's going to try to move northwest, all right, because it's trying to consolidate a little more. And there's a lot of room of air here. Does this consolidate further south? What, what's going to all happen? So right now the Euro shows that this is going to be a little bit sheared uh, over the next three days or so. And most of the model guidance does indicate that. But take note though, once this goes right up here, so right within 66 hours, this is going to kind of do something more like this. It's going to go northwest and then most of the models or some of them indicate it's going to nosedive. And you can see this right here. See that bend? How it goes a little further uh, downward like that 138 hours out this would be by the early part of next week so october the first and the second we could have a tropical depression at this point and then out to tuesday and wednesday next week we could be dealing with maybe a tropical storm but of course this is really far out and even so now this is going to safely miss the islands Given our trends recently, this could go a little bit further uh, off towards uh, basically um, the southwest. So this could go here. It could go here. It might even want to do this. Some of the models, this, uh, the southern outliers want this to go into the Caribbean, which we won't really be discussing today. Otherwise, that would be kind of an outlier scenario. And then, of course, people would get scared. Really not going to include that in today's forecast, but there is some model guidance. And this could get really strong, 941 millibars by day 10, which I also rarely go out uh, towards. So now looking at the water uh, imagery, this is showing you how much... Uh, relative humidity there is so the brown colors indicate drier air so that's a uh, brown shading and then the green shading here indicates more moisture is in the atmosphere so you can see there is our system take note there is a lot a little bit of shear take um you can actually get an idea where all the moisture is it's kind of being shunted it's being uh very asymmetrical got the shear got some dry air imparting on this system that's why it's going to try to go further west. So we wa do watch this one. And then out to 180 hours out, the vortex might try to get better aligned since the shear backs off a little bit. And once it goes northward, if it does, we'll see if Bermuda gets impacted by this. This could really intensify in a hurry. And as you know, yep. It is early October at this time frame, and we could have some pretty intense hurricanes still. So what about the steering flow with the system? So if we look at the uh, 500 millibar chart, we're not going to really worry about, again, Philippe, since Philippe is really going to die away. Most, or if not all of the model guidance, indicates that this might not even be anything in the next three days. It might just be a remnant low, a uh, opened up trough, so it's nothing to really be concerned of in the short term but what we have to watch is what goes on down here because where this forms how far west it goes will impact on where it might end up being so going forward here on the euro uh, let's go out to 48 hours this is thursday you can see the mid-level vortex there at the 500 millibar level this is at again 18,000 feet but take note uh as we do have this trough that moves through you can see kind of the smiley face here you got this ridge that is out towards the west northwest of the system. We also have a little bit of a ridge that is over here. And so the system is not going to really want to turn northward at this given time since that ridge and that trough is weakening and it's deamplifying. And then uh, by, say, 150 hours out, we have this ridge that is pretty strong to the north of the system and that's going to allow our system to move in this general direction so it's going to get very close to the islands here in about 180 hours out but again it all depends on where this ridge is going to be 
at 180 hours out is it a little further west than what the models indicate is this going to help um steer this westward or more northwestward again a lot of answers to be um or a lot of questions to be answered here and my simple answer here is we are not sure yet on how close this is going to get to the islands but all we do know is this could be a big deal when it comes to how strong this might end up getting looking at the latest gf uh, gefs the, actually the euro we're gonna actually you know what let me go back and let me show you all the canadian model because again i promised you all that we would show you that and then we'll look at the gfs so we can see some crazy things are being done by the canadian wants this system to nosedive and be a little stronger towards the northern leeward islands while the canadian tries to consolidate the system over here oops and i'm not on my there we go uh zoomed in a little bit better so that's 150 hours out. If we look at the GFS model, it's also a little slower and a little further to the north. But look at two, this ridge is also sampled by the GFS to be a little stronger. And then it might make the turn and just might hang out around here for a while. And this could really become a factor on, uh, does this go further west? Does it try to dip further south again? Because right now you can see this ridge right in the middle of where this hurricane or tropical whatever system is here at the time in 210 hours is going to be a factor but all we need to know is that yes this is moving safely away from the islands but there is some chances that this could get a lot further or a lot closer and we can see the trends here um this is uh yesterday's 18z model run this is the 0z last night this is the 06Z early this morning, and we can see the trend here actually further south. We will see if that trend continues because now we see that this ridge is actually a little stronger, a little further west, and also this trough here is also a little weaker too at the same time. If we just go ahead and look at that, that's going to really be a key feature is where this trough is and where this ridge is able to build and will depend on how f close this gets to the islands but yeah people on the leeward islands get de definitely kind of stay up to date on my youtube channel for that so looking at the euro ensemble forecast this is the ecmwf ensemble uh, and this is basically the uh, 50 members that are ran through the operational the operational counts as uh member number 51 and yeah, look at uh, some of these ensembles, some of these members bringing it on top of the Northern Leeward Islands. And some of these are actually tropical storm intensity. So, and you are probably like, okay, David, but there's another disturbance. There's Philippe that we're watching, right? Well, it's kind of combined, right? Uh, Philippe has a cone like this and 91L has a cone kind of like this too. So, there could be two impacts. Well, unlikely with Philippe at the moment because Philippe is going to be a lot weaker. But 91L, it could, again, uh, depending on where this starts to strengthen, it's going to really depend on a lot. Most of the ensembles actually on the Euro are not showing appreciable uh, intensification, but probably enough to where this is going to be on our radar. Looking at the GFS model or GEFS, make sure I got that correctly. Also showing, uh, again, a wild outcome here with this cone that is pretty large out to day five and six. So again, this could go as far uh, east as, say, well east of Bermuda if it wanted to go north. And then as far west as maybe the northern Leeward Islands. So another product that I like to look at here is the Super Ensemble, uh, the Super Blend, actually. And I'll zoom this in when I edit this video so you all can see this. And so when I go forward with this, this is basically looking at all of the members put together. And this is really important at showing you all uh, what might end up happening when we use the super blend. So uh, look at this ellipse. Look how large this ellipse is. You can see this blue area. That's a uh, that's the possible outcome scenario or the more likely outcome scenario, the higher chances that is. That's the ensemble ellipse. So you can see this does get close to these northern leeward islands. Now, even so, yes, the operational GFS and the Euro do not indicate that this is going to make landfall. 
we got to keep an eye on some of these members, the potential outcomes that is um, in this model cycle. Uh, let's actually look at uh, the 0Z from last night, and we can see, too, this is loading. Also keeping it pretty close to these islands. Not as much now, a little further to the north as far as the southern limit of that ellipse than what we had before. But it's not really going to matter all that much because, you know, this could trend further south. So now another thing I like to look at is now the actual spaghetti plot. These are our hurricane models. And what Dr. Levi Cowan stated in this image is do not use this map to make decisions. Seek official info, please. And that's what we're going to that's what we're doing here. So the system might move a little bit northwest over the next couple of days. And then this bend off to the west. How soon this happens this happens sooner rather than later, and then it tries to curve up to the northwest again. That turn to back to the northwest might be too late, and some impacts to these islands are certainly a possibility. So it's just about, again, does this turn even occur in the first place? And if it does, who then, how far west could this get? Some of the models like the COTI bring this quite close to the Guadalupe Island in the next five days. So looking at our intensity forecast, this is the Invest 91L model intensity guidance. And yeah, there is appreciable strengthening, mainly uh, likely a tropical storm or a low-grade hurricane in the next two to five days. Some of the models are going really bullish on this at indicating a category one or two hurricane in the next four to five days. Now, if you're specific and you want to look at specific models, some of these are calling for a major hurricane, which is very unlikely at the moment. We're not going to even uh, forecast my intensity that far out. Actually, my intensity forecast does go out that far, but not that high. And right now, my latest forecast does call that this system is going to be strengthening at a modest in, uh, rate. And I'm indicating that this could reach winds of 65 to 70 miles an hour in the next four to six days. So I just want to make uh, let you all, that's my intensity forecast in today's update. So now the environment, I wanted to show you all this pretty quickly, is this is the statistical hurricane intensity prediction system forecast for 91L. So it's the ship's guidance, and it's showing us how strong could this get. Okay, I want to just kind of let you all know this, that the maximum potential intensity is between 150 to 160 knots. If everything was perfect, right? That's based on sea surface temperatures and upper ocean heat content. However, our shear is going to be on the increase, and that's this blue line. So we're gonna we have shear of 10 knots. Shear might go up to maybe 20 to 30 knots in the next four days, and then most of the model guidance does indicate that the shear will back off pretty substantially by day five and six. At which time, again, this could get pretty close to some of the islands, and we could be seen shear as low as 5 to 10 knots by days 6 and 7. Upper ocean heat content definitely fairly uh, robust with moisture in right around 70 to 80 percent and sea surface temperatures really warm in between 29 to 30 Celsius which is pretty warm uh, for the environment that this is going to be moving through. So with that being said, now if you did like today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Tuesday, September 26, 2023, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm a lot. And also hit that like button if you haven't smashed the like button in the past. The more likes we get in this video, the more likely it will be recommended on YouTube to a larger audience. So please consider liking, subscribing, and also leaving an awesome comment in the section below this video. And also be sure to ring the bell notification icon. It's been a while since I actually reminded you all of that. So please uh, ring the bell icon if you do subscribe. That way you get all of my notifications every time I have a YouTube video out on this channel, which I do typically upload every day between about 3 p.m. and about 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Well, that's going to do with today's video. I will have more on this disturbance tomorrow.